Hello everybody, this is Dr. Jawad. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button, bell notification, the like button, and leave a comment and share this video with a friend or post it on your Facebook, Instagram, whatever site to help share with others because Karen is sharing and I appreciate it. Somebody wrote, and which thank you very much for the viewers to write in, I really appreciate it because I've done a lot of videos and sometimes I run, about, run out of ideas myself. So when I had a viewer write in and ask if we could do a video on uh, betaine HCL with pepsin. Now, again, I can't recommend any brands in particular. This is the one that I recommend to my patients. And there is a link to full script down below, which again, has over 300 brands of products. Now, again, I always say do your research because some brands work for some people, some brands work for other people. So not one brand works for everyone. And also always do your research. Okay, so what is betaine, HCL, and pepsin? What is this betaine, HCL, and pepsin, you may ask? Let's back up a little bit. Betaine, it's a natural amino acid which is found in beets, hence betaine, spinach, beef, and shrimp. Now you may ask, hey, what, 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 how about we just increase our beets? Increase your beets, that'd be great because beets, ingestion of beets is also a vasodilator. It's a natural vasodilator. However, one caveat about having too many beets is it will turn your urine red. So just an FYI. So what about the function of pepsin? Why are you taking it with, why are you taking it with pepsin? Because hydrochloric acid and pepsin, pepsin is a natural digestive enzyme that we have anyways. And if you have poor stomach acid, you will naturally have less pepsin, which helps digest proteins because protein digestion begins in the stomach. So by adding hydrochloric acid with pepsin, so the more pepsin you have, the more protein breakdown you're, you're gonna get, so it's gonna better utilize for your body overall. So what's the function of hydrochloric acid? Now, what you wanna do, one thing is, it's kind of backwards. So the pH scale is one acid, 14 alkaline. The pH in your stomach should be between one and three. So what you wanna do, that means you want to lower or increase the amount of acid in your stomach so your pH is between one and three. Because what's gonna happen is if it's 3.5, four or, or above, you're not going to, when the stomach is working, the pH has to be between one and three because it's like a cement truck. So the top of the cement truck closes when the pH level is between one and three. What happens if it's above 3.5 and four? That the lid on the cement truck stays open and this is where you get GERD, acid reflux. So what do they do? They give you proton pump inhibitors, anti-acids, where they really shouldn't give you more of that, more, they shouldn't shut off the production of acid. They should give you more, something that will produce more acid so that it will close the lid on the cement truck so the, now the cement truck will churn and turn and turn your stomach. So it'll break down the proteins and foods appropriately to go to move on to the small intestines. So when you have proper amount of P, uh, hydrochloric acid, you're gonna improve the absorption of vitamin B12. Minerals, proteins, why? Because, especially B12, because B12 is broken down in the stomach, but it's traveled through the small intestines called the intrinsic factor. And if you have poor hydrochloric acid, which doesn't break down the B12 or you have malabsorption, this is where you get anemias. So you want the pH between, to, to be between one and three, because again, the, the enzyme protease helps break down proteins. In addition, between one and three, it kills pathogens and microbes from going to the small intestines because food in general is very, very toxic to the system. Okay, so what makes us produce less acid? Well, the normal aging process. So as we get older, we produce less hydrochloric acid, which is a term called hypochlorohydria, low hydrochloric acid. So the low stomach acid, which again is above a pH of four, causes heartburn, GERD. So what about other causes? Antibiotics and antiacids destroy stomach acid. Antibiotics and antiacids destroy stomach acid acid. P, uh, proton pump inhibitors, PPIs. What they should do is not give you an anti-acid. They should give you something that will create 
more acid, remember, to close the, to the top of that cement truck, the cement mixer. Anti-acid neutralizers, tons. And stomach infections, H. pylori, the number one infection for ulcers. So what about symptoms? Okay, so when you have a big meal, when you have a big meal and you're just bloated, you're burping, you have constipation, you have acid reflux, these are all signs and symptoms of not enough stomach acid because the stu your food is just sitting there. It's not really bring being broken down into the system. And when it's passed through the small intestines, you're, you're passing protein chunks, which means that you're not, your body's not absorbing the essential nutrients it needs for your body's recuperation process. Now the question is always dosage. Now remember, dosage varies according to the person. It's also you want to take this with a meal, don't? Or you want to take it like right before the meal. That's like five minutes right before you put the food in your mouth. But definitely you want to take this with a meal. You can take it with every meal until the until you know that you have good stomach acid. You do not want to take this on an empty stomach. It depends on how big the meal is. No, if it's just if you're just having a banana or a cup of yogurt, no, you need at least a big meal. How much protein is in the meal? That is a big thing too. You want to make sure you're not you're not going to have a 10 grams of protein and want to take this. You want a good amount of protein with your meal. And how much acid is in your stomach? That's a big that's a big question too. Cuz everyone is different. Now, before you write in, I know the very, again, if you read the bottle, the label on the back of the bottle, because it comes in anywhere from 350 milligrams of betaine HCL to 750 milligrams of betaine HCL, and the pepsin will just piggyback on top of it. Don't worry about the milligrams of pepsin. You want to worry about more about the betaine HCL. And it varies, I know, okay, before you write in, I know. I chose seven, 650 milligrams. I'm a big guy. So I need a little bit more punch if I have a big meal. And what you want to do, you want to start off with 650 milligrams or the dosage that you desire, and you want to increase it with each meal until you get symptoms that are notable, like, again, you get tingling, heartburn, diarrhea, digestive discomfort. That means, okay, you, now you're giving too much, too much acid in your stomach and you're not used to it so this is where the digestive discomfort comes now if that happens it's okay it's okay i don't want people to write in dr g i'm having too much too much i know it's very simple to neutralize the acid all you got to do is take one teaspoon of baking soda mix in water and drink it you'll be fine okay so the question is how, how do i know i don't have enough stomach acid wow that's a great question and I already have the answer for it. A very simple test. To test for low stomach acid, you take one quarter teaspoon of baking soda, mix it in four ounces or 120 milliliters of cold water, first thing in the morning or upon waking. For the night shifters, I know your schedule's really different, but first time, the first thing upon waking, you drink it, all of it, and then you time it. If it takes longer than three minutes to start burping, then you have low stomach acid. So that's a phenomenal test, it's simple. So before you write in, say, how do I know I have low stomach acid? Take the test. All right, so I hope this helps. Thank you for writing in and asking to do betaine HCL with pepsin, appreciate it. Hope this works. Leave a comment down below, see how it's going, and I'll see you in the next video. Be good.